Colonel Sandusky, thank you so much for joining us today. Jeannie, thank you for having me. I'm delighted to be here. Can you talk to us a little bit about what the Defense Language Institute is doing to support the warfighter downrange? DLI is really, uh, I think, significantly supporting the warfighter. We've got, first, a great range of products online, familiarization language products, and Head Start products. Uh, we've just recently launched a website uh, to make these materials more easily accessible. They've always been online. They've been online for quite a while, but we've now created a kind of shopping cart uh, virtual experience you can go online to. And you can get materials that are uh, at a familiarization level, which is kind of stop, don't shoot, take me to your leader, uh, focused on very specifically on military tasks, uh, domains such as uh, air traffic controller, general, Generalist medical terms, um, coordinate search, military police terms, convoy operations. Um, and you can also get Head Start products. Uh, we currently have Head Start, which are 80 hour courses with an avatar, with which you can interact and, and learn uh, Iraqi dialect or Dari or Pashto uh, to get you to uh, uh, a little bit beyond a familiarization level. And also on uh, that website, you'll find a lot of cultural products, uh, cultural awareness, country and perspective orientations. And uh, we've sent uh, military or mobile training teams out to units that are getting ready to deploy. In FYO 7, we trained about 21,000 personnel. And then up to now this year, uh, about 24,000. Um, in terms of our language survival kits, we've already issued uh, close to a million. Uh, we think that now with our shopping cart uh, website will we'll be even more effective in getting that material out to the general purpose forces. Now what is the driving force behind all of these different products that you're putting together for the warfighter that's working downrange? Well, you know, one, one good example is, is recently our, our new Army FM on operations came out and identified stability operations as a uh, on a par with combat operations and one of the things that's very striking in that document it talks about military forces now operating among the people we can't bypass the people uh, uh, we can't evacuate them from the battlefield we're going to be operating right there among them and, and it, to be most effective in that kind of an environment you need to be able to communicate uh, and your communication is going to be more effective if you have some cultural awareness so that's what our familiarization products are aimed at now, with us going more toward operations on an urban terrain, how important is it for every soldier to have some kind of basic language skills as opposed to just keeping all this knowledge with a military linguist? Right. I think that's where the Army is headed, uh, and, and that's certainly behind our push to create the familiarization products and our, our cultural awareness uh, materials that you can find online. Now, Arabic, Pashto, and Dari are your top three languages with uh, operations going on right now in the Middle East. What are the other languages that the Defense Language Institute is focusing on right now? More than 90% of our students are taking our Category 3 or Category 4 languages, and those are the, the most difficult languages for a native speaker of English to learn. And it's, it, it includes the ones you've cited, Arabic, uh, Dari, uh, Pashto, um, but also Chinese, Korean, uh, even Russian is included in, that, in those Category 3 and 4 languages. Now, why are you focusing on those? Well, DLI is driven by uh, the requirements that the services give us, and the services are driven by the national uh, security strategy and the, the geopolitical situation in the world. So we have uh, gone through periods, as you can imagine, during the Cold War where we had uh, very, very large uh, numbers of students learning Russian, but also Bulgarian and Romanian and Polish and and, uh, uh, and the Eastern European languages. And uh, during Vietnam, we had a very large Vietnamese department. Um, so we reflect uh, to a very great extent what's going on globally. Army-wide, you've got this major transformation going on to meet our future needs. What are you doing at DLI to equip future military linguists in terms of just training and Again, just the choice of languages as our operations change. The big transformation that's happening at the Defense Language Institute is we are working 
to achieve higher levels of proficiency for our basic course students in the same amount of time. In other words, our basic Arabic course is 64 weeks. It hasn't been lengthened. And yet we're trying to get our students to a higher level at the end of the course. They need that higher level because accuracy in the linguist functions is, is what's being demanded by the agencies that use the language capability. So that's what we're trying to do. And how are we doing it? We're, we're transforming our practices in the classroom. Uh, we have, we've always had small classes, but we even, we have even smaller classes now with uh, the category four languages, Arabic, Chinese, Korean, um, being six person sections with one teacher. A tremendous increase in technology in the classroom, interactive smart boards, um, tablet PCs, every student has an iPod. Um, we will be a fully wireless campus by the end of September. We're the largest wireless project in the Army. Uh, going to be a, a template, I think, for Army, Army wireless enterprises. Um, in addition, uh, we've hired uh, close to a thousand new faculty over the last three years. And those new faculty also have needs, uh, faculty development, instructor certification. So we're constantly working on the quality of the teaching and, and pedagogy that we have in the classroom. And the, the teachers are a very, very important part of our, of our program. Uh, and uh, upgrading the curriculum, uh, making the curriculum so that it's fully compatible with the technology that we've got, so that, so that these teachers can bring material right off the internet, put it on the smart board, exploit it in class, get the, the, the students interacting with it, then give them a homework assignment where the students independently go out, get material off the internet, put it on their iPod, work with it, bring it back into class, um, make presentations or, um, or have discussions about material, very authentic material that they've gotten right um, through the technology in the classroom. The Defense Language Institute is the premier military language academy in the country. And you've got military linguists coming there to learn very complex languages in a very short span of time. And then going off downrange, Iraq, Afghanistan being the main theaters right now. What is DLI doing to support the warfighter with just reach back capabilities and being able to maintain that language proficiency once they've left the classroom? Mm -hmm. Once our students leave, uh, they always have the opportunity to, to reach back. We've got now a, a fairly robust um, continuing education uh, division and a website that includes what we call GLOSS, Global Language Online Support System, uh, that allows you to identify in your uh, target language uh, materials that are at your level or perhaps a, a half a level higher so that you can work to enhance your proficiency. Um, materials that cover all the modalities that we teach, listening uh, and reading. Um, and we're moving to a time when we will actually have e-mentors, uh, teachers available electronically. We already have video teleteaching. Um, and classes that are delivered either through video teleteaching or by language teachers at satellite locations where there are large populations of linguists. Uh, so it's um, a growth industry for us, continuing education. Where do you see the Defense Language Institute's mission going from here? Well, we continue to be, I think, on the cutting edge of uh, language learning um, practice and research about language learning and also the development of measures. Uh, we are the proponent not only for language teaching but also for the development of the defense language proficiency test which is the, the principal uh, uh, measurement mechanism that's used not only by DOD but some of the other US government agencies as well to measure foreign language proficiency and they're always um, uh, new developments in the research about um, testing and test taking and the use of technology that we're trying to incorporate in the next generation of defense language proficiency tests.